Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Long Island Wargaming for a Mordheim Tactics video, and in this one we're going to be going through our shooting skills. So let's break right down into Quick Shot right away here. And quick Shot allows your warrior to shoot twice per turn with a bow or crossbow, but not a crossbow pistol. So, I always say this is an early pick, especially if you're making a shooting-oriented hero. It's always going to increase the shooting effectiveness, because if he's standing still, he's able to take two shots. Now, it's great with bows, and it says with a bow in the rules. So I interpret it as short bow, long bow, regular bow, elf bow. And with crossbow, it says no crossbow pistol. And I don't believe repeater crossbow is in the core book, but I open it up to interpretation to allow a repeater crossbow. And my gaming group has always been okay with that because it's a type of crossbow, just like a elf bow or a long bow is a type of bow. So a repeater crossbow with quick shot gets off four shots a turn. Now Again, that's open to your interpretation. If that is what your gaming group is comfortable with, well then that's the combo I would put it with. Originally I had put multiple shot weapons in here with quick shot, but really the only multiple shot weapon that would apply would be a repeater crossbow because you can't do a sling or a double barreled gun because it doesn't apply to guns, it's only bows and crossbows. But hell, if you guys are down with a repeater crossbow and either you're a dark elf player or you have weapons expert and you want to get a repeater crossbow, I say that's where it's at. Four shots a turn, standing still is pretty stellar. But either way, quick shot, early pick. As you can see, I don't have anything else as the first pick because I think quick shot is that important. Everything else is, you know, the second pick, mid or, mid or late campaign. So let's jump into Pistolier. And this one is always really, really funky. A lot of people will have a hard time understanding the rules of Pistolier, but let's try to discuss it. The warrior is an expert at using all kinds of pistols. He's equipped with a brace of pistols at any time. If he is equipped with a brace of pistols at any time, including crossbow pistols, he may fire twice in the shooting phase. Note, though, that normal reloading rules apply. If he has a single pistol, then he may fire it in the same turn it was reloaded. So with pistolier, if you have one pistol, you shoot every turn. If you have pistolier and you've got a brace of pistols, then you can shoot every other turn, twice. So you do two shots, reload next turn. Two shots, reload next turn. So that's pretty That's pretty cool. Uh, it doesn't say in the pistolier ability whether you are uh, whether you have to deal with the minus one to hit for multiple shots. That's going to be up to your gaming group and or which rule set you use because somewhere sometimes it's FAQ'd that the additional minus one is applied. Sometimes people will say it doesn't. So that's kind of you know open to interpretation and depending on what rule set you use. So clarify that before you get into picking this spell, uh, this ability, whether it does or not. The best combo with this is dueling pistols. Dueling pistols are legit. Uh, the plus one to hit and the increased range is pretty awesome. I must say that whether you are or are not playing with that minus one to hit for multiple shots, if you're not, then that plus one to hit is awesome with the brace of pistols especially if you're doing two shots. So I think it's pretty awesome. Go with that. Um, there are rule sets to allow you to get double-barreled black powder weapons, and this opens a whole other can of worms because a double-barreled pistol allows you to shoot once a turn. So if you have two double-barreled pistols, you're able to shoot two shots every turn. If you have pistolier and two double-barreled pistols, then are you shooting four shots every other turn? I don't know. That is something for you to decide and comment below and or figure out with your gaming group, but I usually stay away from the double-powered, uh, the double-barreled black powder weapons, especially if you're doing the rule that allows your black powder weapons to blow up indefinitely, because you invest a lot of money in a double-barreled weapon that ends up being uh, very easily blown up. So, but that's a whole other topic. I forget which warband introduces double-barreled weapons, but that's a completely separate topic. So let's move on. Eagle eyes plus six inches to range on any missile weapon the character is using. Uh, quick note: some FAQs or rules say that pistols and crossbow pistols are plus three inches, where all other weapons are plus six. So that's something you have to decide beforehand if you apply that uh, correction or not. But if you don't, Definitely do it up with pistolier and um, any any weapon for the most part. I said I write certain weapons here. It's it's very effective. Um, 
especially your guns, your guns are 24 inches, if you want to add plus 6 inches to that and get them up to 30 inches, that is great, but pistoliers, uh, pistols and pistolier characters, it, that plus 6 inches to your 6 inch range or 10 inch range on a pistol is huge. So I would definitely match up Eagle Eyes with a character using pistols or short range weapons. Uh, any weapon applies though because that also increases the short range range which honestly if you're shooting guys at long range you're probably not going to be doing too well because odds are there will be some obstacles and minus one to hit for shooting is already a huge hit in more time because you know you have so few shots to begin with but it is what it is figure out if that's something you want to do but I say it's a mid campaign skill to take weapons expert is next allows you to use any weapon in the shooting uh, genre that's especially not available to your character regularly well, kind of like my last video with weapons training for combat, I say this is a late pick or no pick at all. Unless you come across a really, really cool weapon that you've stolen from somebody or gained in a scenario or you got it from exploration that you really, really want to use. Now, if you are going to try to do the quick shot repeat a crossbow combo, odds are you're going to need a weapons expert so you can get that repeat a crossbow. Unless you are Dark Elves or you're just allowed to have one. <clears throat> but let's say you end up getting to like the the black powder guy in exploration and he allows you to do get a couple guns then you know what maybe weapons expert is worth it so you can have guns on one of your heroes but unless there's a very unique situation I usually stay away from weapons expert unless I've got a plan for a certain character that is either going to add to his abilities or add to his fluff I, I stay away Nimble. The warrior may move and fire with weapons that are normally used if the fire has not moved. So that's crossbows, handguns. Um, note it cannot be combined with quick shot, but you can see that I actually do quick shot here with a little asterisk because if you have nimble and quick shot, part of more time is not staying still. If you stay still, odds are you're going to get hunted down or you're just going to get you know the shit shot out of you. But if you've got quick shot and you stand still with a crossbow, you make two shots. Then you move to either get another vantage point or to get some cover, take one shot. Stay still, take two shots. Move, take one shot. So it's the, the one shot, two shot combo that I like because standing shoot, standing still with the crossbow or with quick shot gets you two shots. But once you move, you get no shots. So is it really a good trade off unless you're able to move and still be able to fire? That's open to interpretation. But either way, I like to do that with quick shot this way. He's always shooting, especially if I'm doing, you know, crossbow henchmen for, you know, a Midnight Warband or my dwarves. You know, it's worth taking. Now, Nimble, I say, is a mid campaign. It's not always my first pick. Um, it does increase survivability because you're able to move and still shoot, especially if you've got a fixed weapon guy that's sitting there with a the handgun and crossbow and you need him shooting. Um, it increases his combat effectiveness because he's able to move and shoot. If he is also a close combat guy, you can move forward, shoot, move forward, shoot, move forward, shoot, or move back, shoot, move back, shoot, move back, shoot. So his combat and survivability is increased with his ability. Um, obviously, you want to combo it up with guns and crossbows, but also if you get Hunter, it's worth it because Hunter allows you to move with a handgun and fire every turn, and we'll get into that in a moment. But you want to combo it up with guns and crossbows, obviously. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a good pick. I like Nimble. And Nimble queued up with Hunter. If you do Nimble, then do Hunter next, which we'll skip Trick Shooter for now. Hunter allows you to shoot every turn with a handgun or Hotchlin Long Rifle. First off, comments below. If you ever used a Hotchlin Long Rifle effectively in Mordheim, let me know. We've always had so much terrain that it's usually never effective at that really really long range that it has but you know it is what it is so hunter is pretty cool combo it up with eagle eyes so you can get long range guns trick shooter so that you're able to fire that gun effectively since black powder weapons are pretty decent and uh like i said it's you know a pick that i would take after nimble or maybe right before nimble that's that's up to you now remember when you roll on advancements you don't always get skills so you can't expect to say, alright, first advancement, I'll get this skill. Second advancement, I'll get this skill. You might roll up three stat increases in a row before you get a second skill, so just be mindful of what skill is best to take when. 
So we will back up to Trick Shooter. Trick Shooter is one that you might take middle, maybe, yet yeah, I would recommend in the middle, after you get Quick Shot, unless you have a weapon that doesn't apply to Quick Shot. After you get Quick Shot, Trick Shooter is a decent one to get, and it is no modifiers for cover, which, let's face it, in Mordheim, there's very few instances where you don't have some sort of cover. I mean, yeah, if you're running across the street, um, you know, you're in cover, but that's that's us. That's for Long Island Wargaming. I have tons of buildings. I have tons of little debris and stuff. I've seen, especially recently in some games that have been posted up by MC1 Gamer and the Sustainable Center, sometimes terrain is more scarce, where it's, you know, you got big sections of open field. It might be because that's the way you want to play, or it might just be because you don't have big big pieces of terrain or lots of terrain yet. So for us, Trick Shooter is definitely a must. For some people, if you're doing more of an open field or Empire in Flames where it's just lots of space, you know, maybe it's less useful, but I definitely say Trick Shooter, you combat it up with just about any other shooting skill. Um, it's just, it's worth it, definitely. So last we have is Nice Fighter. This is one of my least favorite skills, probably because I don't use it, I don't find it as useful. But it allows the warrior to throw three throwing knives in a shooting phase. Which, if you're going with throwing knives or throwing weapons, that's, you know, it's okay. Um, you can't combine it with quick shot, obviously. If you take this skill, I would say take it late in a campaign. If you can find a reason to bring it earlier mid, comments below. I, I don't have too many thoughts on Knife Fighter, besides the fact that if you do take it, take it with Eagle Eye because that six inches of extra range for a throwing knife would be essential because it's not very long of a range to begin with. So that kind of sums up shooting skills. Next will be academic, so I'll get that done in the next video. Uh, comments, questions, ideas, thoughts, please post them below, and I'll see you guys in the next Mordheim Tactics.